Modern dating apps make it easy for people to find potential partners anywhere and at any time. They offer a wide range of choices based on personal preferences, making it convenient to connect with others. Dating apps facilitate communication, enabling users to establish rapport and compatibility before meeting in person, which can help alleviate some of the pressure associated with traditional dating. However, the convenience of modern dating apps also comes with its pitfalls. Superficial judgments based solely on appearance or brief profiles can lead to a culture of superficiality and may overshadow deeper compatibility factors. Having too many options can also make it hard to make decisions or be satisfied with a match. Plus, there is a risk of people not being honest about who they are, leading to trust issues and even scams, such as catfishing, a topic central to the case of Ingrid Line, a 40-year-old nurse and mother of three from Washington in the United States. For those perhaps unfamiliar with the term, catfishing is a deceptive practice where someone creates a fake online identity to deceive others, often in the context of social media or dating platforms. These individuals use fake names, photos and personal information to establish relationships with unsuspecting victims. Catfishers may engage in these actions for various reasons, such as seeking attention, emotional manipulation, or financial gain. Victims of catfishing often experience emotional distress and betrayal upon discovering the true nature of the person they thought they were interacting with online. Ingrid Marie Roundsavile Line, quote, lived life large, even though she was petite, and moved to Washington in 2000. By 2016, she was a devoted mother to three daughters, Reese, Brooke and Noel, and was two years divorced. However, both she and her ex-husband, Phil, were on good terms. She worked as a nurse at the Swedish Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. In 1993, she completed her studies at Canyon del Oro High School, followed by earning a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from the University of Arizona in 1997. The Line family resided in a home in Renton, located near Seattle. Renton is a diverse city known for its natural beauty and history. Home to Boeing, it has a rich industrial past. Today, Renton offers urban conveniences alongside outdoor activities like parks and trails, with Lake Washington adding to its charm. Its bustling downtown hosts shops and eateries, creating a vibrant community feel. With its scenic surroundings and welcome atmosphere, Renton is a popular destination in the Seattle area. On the 9th of April 2016, Phil returned to the family home to drop off the children at approximately 10am, an arrangement which had been made with Ingrid. He was puzzled by the fact that Ingrid's car, a Toyota Highlander, wasn't sitting in the driveway as it should have been. It was peculiar, as Ingrid was not due to have a work shift that day, and even if she had made other plans, it was highly unusual for her to not inform Phil about such changes. Phil called her several times, however his anxiety began to manifest further when she did not receive him on the other line. Unable to enter the property, Phil called Ingrid's mother, Georgia Bass, and she subsequently arrived at the home with a key to the front door. The pair entered and were met with silence. Inside the house, Georgia discovered Ingrid's purse, cell phone and various personal items, including her driving licence. However, Ingrid herself was nowhere to be found. Georgia promptly dialed emergency services to report her daughter as missing. Authorities then contacted Ingrid's acquaintances and neighbours for information. 
One friend disclosed that Ingrid had sent a text message the previous evening, April 8th, mentioning she was on a date around 10.35pm. Additionally, a neighbour mentioned that Ingrid had been seeing a man named John. Other neighbours reported a last sighting of Ingrid at her mailbox before she departed from her home. Since Georgia and Ingrid shared a phone account, Georgia had immediate access to Ingrid's phone records. Upon reviewing the records, she observed that a particular phone number appeared multiple times bearing a Montana area code. Aiding her mother in her quest to find Ingrid, Ingrid's sister typed the phone number into an online search engine and found a Facebook account associated with the number. The profile belonged to John Robert Charlton. Georgia decided to message John and ask as to whether he knew the whereabouts of Ingrid and further informed him that she had called 911. Their messages went as follows. My name is John. I thought she was with her kids today. When did you see her last? She's not here. Her phone is here and driver's license and purse, but she's not. Please respond. I've called 911. 911? What's going on? We went to the Mariners game last night, but we didn't stay the night together because she has her kids today. Not sure what she has told you about me and our relationship. She's missing. What time did you see her last? A police officer needs to speak to you as you may be the last person who saw her. Can you please call me? I know your name is John Charlton, so please call me. Please, John. Did Ingrid say anything about someone coming to see her after you separated from her last night? We can't find her or her car. As I said, her phone and ID and purse are at her house, but she and her car are gone without a trace. Any help would be appreciated. We are desperate. She would never just go off and leave her family. Later that same day of April 9th, at approximately 4.30pm, a man named Mike Novasio called the police, stating that he had made a gruesome discovery outside his home near 20th Avenue and East Pine Street in Seattle, around 10 miles from Ingrid's home. In his recycling bin, which he had expected to have been emptied, there were three white trash bags inside. Lifting the bags out for closer inspection, which he noted were incredibly heavy, he saw what he thought was a human foot. HLN's crime series Sex and Murder aired the 911 call that Mike made, where he further described, I grabbed the first bag and it was so almost professionally packaged that it was very eerie, and you could see as I pulled it out what it was, the outline of a face. It was found that within these bags were human remains, a left arm, a right leg and the head of a woman, who was later identified as 40-year-old Ingrid Line. According to records, on the 10th of April, detectives discovered blood, pieces of human flesh and a 15-inch pruning saw in Ingrid's bathroom. Additionally, they found trash bags resembling those in which Ingrid's remains were located. In the subsequent days, additional portions of Ingrid's remains were discovered. Some were located in a cooler bag along 20th Avenue, situated between East Union and Marion Streets in Seattle, while others were found at a recycling centre on South Hanford Street in Seattle. It must be stated that not all of Ingrid's remains were recovered. Upon the finalisation of the autopsy report and her identification, Ingrid's family released a statement saying, A light went out of our lives forever. Ingrid, beloved mother, daughter, sister and friend, was taken from us for reasons we still cannot comprehend. Our hearts are broken and can never be fully mended. The autopsy confirmed Ingrid's cause of death as having been homicidal violence. Shortly after her death, her family set up a GoFundMe page to raise funds for the futures of Phil and Ingrid's daughters, which raised over $270,000. 
According to police reports, 37-year-old John Charlton informed authorities that he and Ingrid had been in a relationship for roughly one month, having met on dating site Plenty of Fish. On his dating profile, he stated his body type, height, hair and eye colour and that he was a non-smoker. He listed his personality as a free thinker and that in regard to dating, he wasn't looking for anything serious and was mainly seeking friends to meet up with. He said he didn't drink often, was a practicing Catholic and was a student from Seattle. It became apparent to Ingrid upon meeting and getting to know him over the course of a few weeks that his life wasn't quite as good as he made it out to be on his dating profile. It transpired that he didn't own a vehicle, or have a steady job, or even have a house to live in. Ingrid chose to keep this casual relationship private and did not inform her loved ones that she was seeing someone. John claimed to have stayed overnight at her residence on several previous occasions. John and Ingrid had made plans to attend a Seattle Mariners game together on Friday, April 8th, 2016. Following the game, they visited a bar where John consumed an excessive amount of alcohol before returning to Ingrid's residence in Renton. Police reports indicate that John informed detectives that he awoke the following morning on a downtown Seattle sidewalk, where detectives later discovered Ingrid's 2015 Toyota Highlander, a vehicle John admitted to stealing. John Charlton was subsequently brought in for questioning and became the main suspect in the case. John confessed that he was homeless and, quote, not a normal person and had a severe problem with alcohol. He allegedly stated that he believed he and Ingrid engaged in sexual activity after attending the Mariners game on the Friday night. However, he admitted to having been heavily intoxicated, resulting in a lack of recollection regarding their return to her home and the events that followed. Additionally, John remarked that Ingrid's behaviour seemed unusual to him. According to Q13 Fox, John has a criminal record spanning several states, which includes convictions for aggravated robbery, felony theft, grand theft motor vehicle, fourth degree assault and third degree larceny. Additionally, in 2006, his parents pursued a restraining order against him. They reported that he had removed the film Hannibal from a shelf and advised his mother to watch it with caution. The order was subsequently dismissed at the parent's behest. John Charlton was arrested and charged with the murder of Ingrid Lyne. He chose to plead guilty to first degree murder, meaning that a trial would not take place. This meant that many questions about Ingrid Lyne's final moments were left unanswered. John Charlton confessed to strangling Ingrid at her residence in Renton during the early hours of April 9th, 2016. He never disclosed his motive for killing Ingrid. He was sentenced to 27 years and 9 months in prison for the murder. The Seattle Times reported that at John Charlton's sentencing, Phil Lyne spoke before the court, highlighting the profound and enduring loss that his daughters would bear for the remainder of their lives. He said, quote, Our daughters continue to thrive, but they miss their mother every day. Life is fleeting and time is short underscoring the importance of making meaningful connections and experiences. While dating apps offer opportunities to meet new people and potentially find love and companionship, it's crucial to remain vigilant and cautious in navigating these platforms. Ingrid Lyne was adored for her quick wit, infectious smile and devotion to her family and will forever remain in the hearts and minds of those who loved her.